All right, so y'all have seen some of our basic pig setup for our adults. We've showed y'all our portable watering system, what works for us. A little bit redneck, but it works. We've got more piglets coming next week. I get a lot of questions constantly about how do you train your pigs to two strands of poly braid? That's either from people who just don't believe it'll work or from people who have tried electric fencing and it's fallen through in the past. I'm gonna show you what I do. It has a pretty high success rate. It's not bulletproof, but for the most part it works. I'm, I'm gonna show you. We'll walk over here. So this big old weedy monstrosity, this big old mess is where my old piglet pen was. I think I'm gonna do something a little different this year just because I don't have as many piglets coming this year. Last year I did 10, this year I'm getting five and two of those are going to a buddy of mine, so it'll just be three. So what I'm doing is last year I had an electric fence that encompassed this whole thing. I strung netting around it and that worked out real well. This year, I think I'm just gonna cut a path right here. I'm just gonna put the three in this little shed. This shed just tends to be a catch-all. Every year I tell myself, I'm just gonna tear it down, but every year I end up using it. I may ought to just hold my horses on that. I think what I'll end up doing is putting another, it's got two walls that are totally missing. I think I'll end up putting the walls in and then redoing the roof. And it may turn it into a brooder house eventually for the chickens. But in the meantime, it works great for training these pigs. I'll show you what I do. So this crap right here, this is just gonna get bush hogged. Bring a tractor up here, cut that down, mulch it up. It's just kind of a catch all right now. It's just kind of a junk room. Got a couple little pullets over there in that cage. They're heading off to mom and dad's house. They're being put in a big chicken tractor today. And then I, I've just got to get this stuff out of here, set it aside. Just a bunch of junk, got concrete, just junk. It had trees growing all through it. I cut it all down. I'm gonna leave it in here. We'll move all these rocks. So what I like to do for the pigs is I'm just gonna put some eye hooks right here. There's some old ones over here. I just go put a couple of eye hooks in on the inside of this whole thing, right? So put a couple of eye hooks, couple of insulators, just like you use on any standard electric fencing. So the trick is with fencing, so a lot of people put fencing up and they just run a strand right here. They go, that's where the pig look is looking at when he's standing, and that must be enough. That's not true. You gotta at least start with two. I'm not saying you can't get a pig to be trained to one, but start with two. Pigs got two eye levels when they're rooting around grazing for food. Eye level when they're standing, and eye level when their nose is to the ground. So the trick is, put one about where their eye level would be when their nose is to the ground. That way they're down here rooting and they can still see that wire right here. So down real low. And then you put one up where their eye level would be when they're standing. That way, no matter when they're active, they see that wire. And then the last trick to do an electric outside of it just being a hot fence, it's gotta be memorable. It's gotta be extremely hot, is to have something behind it. I've got a wall behind this and then over here, I'm gonna string my wire in between these beams, but I'm gonna wrap it in some heavy duty plastic netting. That way, the wire's on the inside, the netting's on the outside. A pig's first instinct when they get hit or hurt by something and they don't know what it is, pigs tend to run forward, run through things. So you've gotta have something there that's strong enough to be a detour for that. So they get shocked and instead of running through it, they what, the, <laughs> what they do, and they'll only do it once or twice, they're pretty smart. They'll get shocked and then they'll try to run through, but then they get shocked again because they can't go through it and then they back up. That's really the key. I keep my piglets up here two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month, just depends. Load this area up with some mulch and some bedding, let them root around, let them get comfortable, let them get used to the new area. There's gonna be some new sounds here that they're not used to. They'll hear the dogs running around and barking out in the back. They'll hear the sheep crying. It just kind of gives them a chance to readjust. We'll do another video when I move them out into the big field. But when you move them out into the big field, you put four T-posts in, you string your poly braid, they're already trained to electric, and you just let them loose and they do their thing. But anyway, I thought I'd share that. I thought that was just some helpful tips. I'll do it and then I'll bring y'all back and I'll show y'all what it looks like. But there's really nothing to it. Hot, 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 hot fence. Good protection behind it. Then the two levels of eye contact for your pigs. You do those two or three things, it's pretty bulletproof. Now, every once in a while you do get one that's just rebellious and you just can't keep them in to save your life, but more times than not, it works. And if you get one that's just hardcore rebellious and you make adjustments to the fence and he won't stay in when you've dumped him out in the field, I tell everybody to just sell that pig. It's just not worth the headache. More times than not, it works out. It works out real well. And uh, yeah, give it a shot. I'll string this up. It's redneck, but it works for us. I'll show you in a minute.
So I got all the little spacers in, the insulators, I mean. I've got my wire strung up, so let me show you all that real fast. So this is what we're working with. All the way around. What I may end up doing, I'm grabbing a step-in post or two, just to make sure this is a little tighter to the ground. I haven't seen these pigs, but I know they're roughly six, seven weeks old. I'm just going based off how big piglets have been in the past. So I still got some cleaning up to do. Gotta get all this crap out of here still. These guys are going to mom and dad's tonight. And then I gotta do something with all these rocks. Other than that, that's just about it. Other than wrapping the netting around these two sides. So I got a barrier for them right here. When I get the netting strung up, I'll show y'all what the finished product looks like. Now I just gotta hook it to the hot box. I don't know if I'm gonna hook it to the hot box I've got plugged up in that shed right there or bring a small solar one up on the fence with it. Not sure which way I wanna go on that. A real redneck setup, real simple. It didn't cost me a penny. I had the insulators. They're just leftovers. The poly rope is just a, I had a whole big strand that snapped and frayed just from how old it was. And that was one of the nicer pieces out of it. I just rolled it up and said, ah, I might use that for some patchwork. Worked out perfect. Just over what I needed to complete this project. Pretty exciting. Like I said, just gotta wrap the netting, make sure it's spaced and then hook the fence box up and make sure it's hot. Then get some good bedding in here and uh, water dish and feed. These guys will be ready for training. And like I said, they'll only be in here two weeks, maybe four at the max, you know, it just, it doesn't take them long to learn. As I was doing this, I was just kind of thinking back over the journey of getting started on farming. And that's kind of where we are now. You know, you just, you got a dream or you got an ambition or you got something you want to do. You just got to start somewhere, I guess. And this little setup out here didn't cost me nothing or very little. It was just left over and it's nothing fancy. It allows us to take care of a couple of customers and feed our family and raise pigs in a way that I think is way superior than what they're getting in the store. That's just kind of where my mind is. Start somewhere, right? If you never start, you'll never see what it can become. Get the bare minimum you need to get started and start, whether it's farming or a hobby or a new business idea, just start somewhere. Get enough stuff to get started, get a little skin in the game and give it a shot and see what you think. And that's what we're doing here. I'll keep you posted on the build as we move forward. Should have it done here by this afternoon. I gotta go pick up the wire from mom and dad's house. Yeah, pigs are coming Wednesday. We're ready to get them suckers over here. I'll see y'all in a little bit. Y'all have a good day. All right, I'm in my bathroom. I wouldn't plan on making a video of this because I'm far from a handyman. The toilet downstairs, all the guts of it, it's leaking water constantly. I'm scared it's gonna fill up our septic tank. And I went to make some adjustments on it. The valve that turns the water off to the toilet started leaking on me. I went to the hardware store. I've done a little research. I think I can fix it myself. Thought I'd just make a quick video and show you guys what's going on. Here we are at the toilet. This is our downstairs basement. This little valve right here, you can see that beautiful drywall work the previous owners did for us. Gorgeous, just stunning. This, I went to turn this off and it started dripping water. It looks like it stopped. I'm just real timid that if I don't, if I hold it off and procrastinate, one, we're not gonna be able to have our second bathroom. And then two, I, I'm just scared whatever valve's in there that's damaged or loose is gonna come fully loose and I'll just have water damage all in my basement. Not into that. And instead of replacing this valve and then replacing all the guts that go in this, I was just gonna go ahead and just replace the whole thing. The previous owners really did a crappy job. I mean, you can probably see by this nice shoehorned snake of a pipe there, they got the wrong size and instead of getting the right size, they, uh, they said, yeah, that'll work. We'll just bend it into place. We'll worry about the drywall another day. I want this toilet fixed. So the guts back here are all messed up. It constantly leaks water. This thing's always just constantly running. And then this thing right here just, when it fills up, it vibrates up against it. And you hear it throughout the whole house, really annoying. So I think they got it used and just threw it down here. You can also see that they never cut the eye bolts for the caps. They tied it down so tight that they've almost cracked the daggone toilet itself. I'm gonna go ahead, take this puppy out. I'll walk you through some of it. Put a new one in, we'll see how it goes. It's already broke. Worst that can happen is I'm not able to get the new toilet in and I need to call one of my friends to come over and give me an assist. Or Papa Dave, I've seen Papa Dave change a toilet. I think I've got this though. So first thing I did, I cut the water off to the house. Then I drained it. So I turned the pipe on for the sink, drained the water out of the line so that way there's not pressure behind this guy right here. Then I went ahead and flushed the toilet. That drained this tank. And then I just took a plunger and plunged the toilet the rest of the way to force all the water out of the, just out of this. I want as little water in here as possible. That's what I did. Second step, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this puppy right here. Disconnect these eye bolts right here. Lug this sucker out. 
I'll get with you in a minute. All right, so I got the toilet disconnected. Just unscrewed this, undid these bolts right here. You see that? Throwing this away, scraping up this disgusting wax ring right here. Let me see, that's better. Didn't make too big a mess until I got outside. Then I got turd water all over my feet. So not bad, great. Time to scrape this out, take these plugs out and uh, put a new wax ring on. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this valve right here and then bring the new toilet in and start hooking it up and testing for leaks. See you in a minute. All right, so a couple of things real quick. All right, so right here. So I had drained all the pipes. I didn't think about this. Just a tip if you do this. Even though I drained all the pipes, this is the lowest point for water in the house. So even though I drained off the sink and the sink's upstairs and the bathtub and everything else, this still had a bunch of water behind it. A lot of water still on the line. So I ended up hooking this back up. I ended up just putting it back on here and bending it over into the toilet hole. And then that way I turn the valve, drain it out the rest of the way, and then take it off and just not have so much to just clean up with a towel. I saturated one towel, it was a lot of water. Just took a wrench, pop this off, this little guy. That's the guy giving me all the problems. This guy's out, let's pop the new one on. See what we get. All right, so I'm back, back to it. Let me show you this. Just unscrewed it, put plumber's tape on there, screwed the new one on. I went ahead and turned the water back on just because if this guy right here is leaking, I'd rather know now before that toilet's in my way. Turned it on, I'm gonna clean up a little bit, give it a couple minutes, just make sure I come back, don't see any water. Pretty good, halfway there. All right, new wax rings on. This is holding up great. No leaks, no water, no nothing. New wax ring on, new bolts are in. Getting ready to place the toilet on here. Let's get that sucker in place and start putting it together and test it out, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, we bolted, bolted in. Don't do what I did. I that was the longest part of the whole process because I forgot to put the daggone washers that hold these little caps in place. So I had to undo it all and retighten it down. But so far, so good. All right, it's the moment of truth time. So we're gonna turn this water on and let her fill up and see if we got any leaks. I'm pretty stoked. Let's see what we got. So far, so good. Jeez. Mm, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Filling up. I'm probably gonna have to make an adjustment or two, but no leaks so far. Pretty simple install, y'all. Just unhook everything, put the new wax ring down, put new bolts in, stick it on top, check for leaks. Hope this is valuable to somebody. I'm not a plumber. I wouldn't even say I'm super handy. I don't know, if I can do it, anybody can do it. So give it a shot, I guess.